Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Ken, and this is Casual Coffee with Ken. I'm so uh, so glad to be here this morning. Sorry about yesterday. <coughs> I've just been... <coughs> excuse me. I'm not sick, despite my cough, which I have like all the time anyway because of my allergies, but I have been feeling so run down lately that I've just been erring on the side of caution, and when I feel just exhausted, I've, I've just been sleeping in. So uh, that's what I did on, on Monday and yesterday. Excuse me, sorry, I'm slurping my tea and everything. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Boy, can I say um anymore? I need to break myself of that habit. I hope you are well on this fine Thursday morning. I hope you're having a good week so far. I don't know what everyone's been doing uh, with the, uh, you know, basically shelter in place recommendations for everywhere. Uh, but I hope whatever it is you've been doing to take your mind off things, that it's been fun, it's been enjoyable, that you're making the most of the time that you have. Uh, to yourself and with your loved ones, depending on whatever your situation is, your living situation right now, but it's definitely a, a strange time. <laughs> but uh, I think for the most part, all we can do is be informed, to be cautious, to not panic, uh, but just to be aware of, of things that are going on and, uh, and to do our best, which really in this in this particular case, the best thing you can do is just to stay put and relax if you can. I know everybody's work situations are different. I know that people in the hospitality industries, casinos, restaurants, bars are being particularly impacted by everything that's going on. So. There are a number of ways you can support restaurants and uh, not so much bars, but restaurants where you can do just takeout orders or pickup orders where you don't sit in the dining room. It's, it's always a good thing uh, to do that if you're looking to kind of patronize your local businesses. Good morning, Sean. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> So uh, today's tea of the day isn't anything particularly exotic, but it's still one of my favorites. I know I've talked about it before on, uh, on this show, but it's one that you can usually find at the grocery store with no problem. And I haven't seen a, a huge shortage in teas, which is good for me, but uh, I particularly like this Bigelow tea. It's called ginger peach turmeric. And it's just enough turmeric in there to give it a, a nice kind of spicy uh, taste, nice uh, warmth in the back of your throat. That combined with just the natural spiciness of ginger. And it's, it's a wonderful flavor combination, in my opinion. Karina, who really enjoys peach teas, does not care for this. The, the turmeric is just a, a step too far for her. <laughs> I particularly like uh, this this tea though. Um, and you know it's herbal so no caffeine. It's good stuff. I like it so I would highly recommend it. Uh, this price right here is for a case of six boxes. Nobody needs a case of six boxes of tea. Uh, and you can find just the single boxes at your local 
Save Mart or wherever you happen to shop. But yeah, just uh, something mellow. Didn't feel like uh, going fancy with the tea today. So, yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff going on. There is, I'm pleased to say, no shortage of uh, uplifting stories in this whole situation, which is good. If you were to just go by what's shown on uh, the local and, and national news stories, you might just be feeling depressed as heck right now. But the internet is great for being able to kind of filter out the noise and the static and the depression and, uh, and just concentrate on, on things that are, are good. Like this, uh, this next story, back when uh, my singing voice used to be good, I, I loved to sing. I've been in a couple of different choirs. And so this particular story uh, speaks to me in a, in a very certain way. Uh, there is a, a choir formed that is uh, an online-only choir. <laughs> it's really cool. What they ended up doing is um, having a virtual choir. And this happened over in the UK, but of course, since it was the internet, you could participate even if you were outside of the UK. And they nicknamed it the Sofa Singers, which I think was particularly fun name on there. And the inspiration was taken from the videos that have been going around of the neighborhood singing in Italy during their lockdown. And, uh, you know, it was a bit of an experiment. And they had uh, 500 digital spaces available. There was no charge to participate in this. The selections they chose to sing was uh, were Stand By Me and a segue into Just the Way You Are by Bruno Mars. Now, the fun thing about this is during the 45-minute broadcast, everyone who was participating could see each other but they couldn't hear each other. And uh, as uh, the choir master Sills said, that was a, a crucial part, not only because technically it would be very hard to, to make that work if everyone could hear each other, uh, but a lot of people love to sing, but are embarrassed by the sound of their own voice, especially if you're comparing it to the voices of other people. So the fact that you could just sing your heart out, not hear yourself in the microphone and not hear other people around you, it, it takes a lot of the self-consciousness out of it. And I love it that the guidance on the website said, sing as if no one is listening because they won't be. <laughs> but um, he did encourage people to share the final video with uh, whoever they wanted. Um, and it's just, uh, it's fun. I guess they're going to they're gonna keep it up. It's going to be a weekly thing. Uh, so there are a couple of websites you can go to, and I'll, I'll post these in the description after the broadcast. Uh, thesofasingers.net is one, and jamessillsmusic.co.uk is the other. But I thought that was fun. That's a, a great way uh, that the power of technology can be harnessed to just bring something amazingly positive to a situation that inherently can be a little scary. So I thought that was that was a particularly fun one. Um, everybody loves animal stories. I love animal stories. Okay, first of all, on this next story, the, the type of dog featured in this 
I've never seen before. Didn't know it was a real thing. Absolutely amazing looking animal. But uh, <coughs> the, uh, the other animal in this story that has attached itself to this dog is even cuter in my estimation. So uh, I guess this particular breed of dog is called a Puli or a Pulley, P-U-L-I. And not one time, but two separate times, he ended up with stowaways on his person. <laughs> so uh, in this case, baby possums. So this is a picture from the, the owner, Sally uh, Watkinson, of the first time it happened. You can see the little guy there. Look at that little guy. That's a baby possum. He was just hitching a ride on this poor dog. Because why not? Why, why walk when there's transportation available in the form of a... Uh, very unique dog. Look at that hair. I've never seen a dog like this. That hair is remarkable. And it happened again on two separate occasions. This is a, a picture from the second time it happened. And look at that little guy. He is just so comfortable. Looks like he's napping. I think his eyes are probably open, but for all the world, he could just be sleeping. He doesn't have a care in the world. Oh my god, they are so cute. I love the baby possum. Uh, the dog's name is Cato, and uh, and he was a little more agitated, uh, according to uh, the owner, that uh, the second time, because the possum was digging in a little bit more. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at him. So the first possum uh, was a little girl who was uh, in the care of a wildlife carer right now until she is old enough to be released. And the second possum was a little boy who is also uh, being cared for until he is old enough to be released into the wild. But, oh my God. I mean, they just couldn't resist. To them, Cato the dog was just the perfect combination of efficient transport and luxury. <laughs> luxury comfort. <laughs> Rasta dog, man. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> ah, can you imagine bathing that dog? That's got to be tricky, right? That, that's probably, probably takes a, a good amount of effort. And then drying the dog. Never seen a dog like that before. Just blew my mind. So yeah, uh, baby possums. What's not to love? And in a story I did the other day uh, that was focusing on, on Australia, where they, uh, Woolworths is the name of the chain there in Australia, where they were focusing on opening an hour early exclusively for seniors. I'm glad to see that that particular trend is gaining traction all over the world, uh, in the U.S. and uh, in Ireland as well. So there's a particular chain called Ryan's Super Value, and uh, they are allocating more than an hour. They're allocating from 7.30 in the morning to 10 a.m. on Wednesdays, and uh, for every other uh, Wednesday morning for the foreseeable future. And another chain called Little is setting aside two hours a day for senior citizens to shop. They're doing this across all their 163 stores in Ireland. And it's going to be two hours, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day until further notice. So this is... Uh, this is really good. I mean, we've all seen the, the stories about uh, people just 
taking advantage, I guess, of the elderly during this time. Um, but good on these shops, more and more of them. They're taking the initiative to make sure that uh, our senior citizens are looked after right now. I know Whole Foods in Reno is doing something similar. I believe it's from eight to nine that, uh, that they're opening just for seniors. I think Winco is gonna follow suit here if they haven't already. So good stuff, it's good news. It's another good example of how uh, people recognizing a need and meeting it. Uh, and it all happened fairly quickly, which is great. And I'm really encouraged to see this kind of rapid response to, to a problem like this. And going back to the subject of animals, because we love animals, uh, there are a number of animal webcams that you can watch at any time, which is great. So there's a couple of them on here. <clears throat> there's a hummingbird cam. Apparently this, uh, this hummingbird has been returning to the same ficus tree in Southern California for many years, since 2005. The homeowner has named her Bella and installed a camera to share the nesting activity with everybody. And there's a, a link here where you can go to the live cam. You can also see farm animals at Flying Skunk Farm. It's a live barnyard webcam at a farm in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Uh, they even have a microphone to capture the uh, general farm noise, which can be fun. <laughs> There's a Rescue Kittens webcam, which is fantastic. The Future Service Dogs webcam, provided by the Warrior Canine Connections Puppy Enrichment Center. And then you have the Marine Life at Folger Pinnacle Reef, which is an underwater live webcam which could be really fun. I, I'm actually probably gonna check that out later on today. Divers will uh, periodically clean and service the cameras. So that's good. You've got a bald eagle cam. I guess the eagles are named Mr. President and the First Lady. And the cameras are provided by the American Eagle Foundation. Giant panda cam thanks to Smithsonian National Zoological Park's Panda Cam. And they, uh, they stream 24 seven. And then African penguins. San Diego Zoo has a cam there where you can watch their African penguins flapping around. And uh, the article says that you might spot a leopard shark swimming around if you keep your eye on the water. Jellyfish cam. I don't know that we needed a jellyfish cam, but if you like jellyfish, why not? And then a giraffe cam at the Houston Zoo. You can spend hours watching the giraffes there. And of course, they're not alone. There are zebras and ostrich there. And I guess this one is interactive. Viewers can even take turns controlling the camera's angle. That could be interesting, people fighting for the perfect angle to see these zebras. So yeah, I'll go ahead and put a link to this page here where you can see the list of webcams yourself and, and just take a look, check it out. Just one more way to, you know, divert your brain uh, right now while we're all stuck indoors. Uh, now, a little bit more of a serious topic um, <coughs> that's good and bad. I'll tell you why. Uh, there is a French researcher who has had 
very positive results with a treatment for COVID-19. And that's great, right? Of course, that's wonderful. There's a drug that's already already exists for other uh, medical conditions. And it's called chloroquine. Um, it's better known by the drug name Plaquenil. And Plaquenil has been used to treat malaria for many, many, many years. So it was a controlled study with 24 patients who volunteered to, uh, to do this. And each of the patients were given 600 micrograms per day of the Plaquenil for 10 days. And, you know, they were closely observed during this time. And what they found was that patients who had not received the, the Plaquenil were still contagious with COVID-19 after six days. But for the group of people who had received the Plaquenil, after six days, only 25% of that group were still contagious. That's huge. That's really good. Uh, so uh, there's been other countries that have used Plaquenil to treat uh, COVID-19 patients, China included. So this is, this is good. Uh, the study has been duplicated, I guess, and uh, in the U.S. And so they, they back that up. They say, yeah, this is actually valid. Uh, quote, use of chloroquine or chloroquine tablets is showing favorable outcomes in humans infected with coronavirus, including faster time to recovery and shorter hospital stay. And there's even evidence that it could be used as a preventative measure while waiting for an actual vaccine. Now, uh, chloroquine is inexpensive. It's globally available. It can be taken safely by pregnant women, nursing mothers. So this is all great news. However, the downside to this, as experienced by two of my friends here in Reno, is the fact that this medication, as, as was previously mentioned, the Plaquenil is used to treat other conditions, and those conditions include some fairly serious autoimmune diseases. Uh, like Sjogren's and lupus. And what's starting to happen, and something that I, through you know, Facebook, trying to post to pages for the mayor and for our senators in Washington, state senators, um, been I've been posting what's happening, hoping that someone will take it seriously, but um, people with lupus and Sjogren's and other autoimmune diseases that rely on this to keep those conditions in check are starting to be told that there isn't enough. There isn't enough Plaquenil in stock at various pharmacies because more people or more doctors are starting to use it to treat COVID-19. So, as with everything, there needs to be a balance achieved so that we're not helping one segment of the population by hurting another segment of the population. I don't personally know 
what's to be done about it. I'm not familiar with the supply chains that are involved for obtaining more of this medication, more of the Plaquenil. I just know that we can't be denying that medication to anybody right now. Uh, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm not sure what more we can do other than try to keep calling attention to this growing issue because it is going to grow. Uh, so, so it's, this is a good news story in the fact that this medication is proving time and time again to be effective in treating COVID-19 and reducing uh, the severity of the symptoms, reducing the length of time people are contagious, all great stuff, but we absolutely cannot put existing patients who are taking this medication to manage their very serious conditions. We cannot put those people in harm's way by, by uh, reallocating their very necessary medical treatments. So. Sorry, I'm not expressing myself very eloquently today, but uh, just kind of tired today. But yeah, so uh, overall, though, very positive story. I'm, I'm glad that there's that there's a path for people to to be able to heal quicker, to be able to recover quicker uh, after being exposed to to this very non-flu-like flu. -like flu. <laughs> COVID-19 is definitely more serious than the regular flu. Regular. And then last but not least, um, events such as this pandemic do a very good job of showcasing people at their best and at their worst. And the same is true for companies. Now, any of you who have seen any of my videos on my open and shut reviews page, or even some of them here, know that I am a nerd for fountain pens. It's a strange habit. Not, not, not people, not a lot of people get my fascination with it. And they're like, pens, whatever. I love fountain pens. I have a decent collection. This one's one of my favorites just because of the color. It is a gorgeous red. Snap cap, which is great. Don't have to twist it on and off. That's good. This is one that I got. It's a Monarch. Uh, I got this from a company called Nemesine, and unfortunately they're, they're going out of business. It's a bit heavy, but it's good. Good line. This is another one I got from Nemesine. It's called the Neutrino, uh, named after the particle that is likewise very small. I just love fountain pens. I love the way they write. They improve my handwriting amazingly. I have the worst handwriting, but as soon as I started writing with fountain pens, so much more legible and fancy and fun looking. Love it. So anyway, I say all of that to give a shout out to the company that I buy the majority of my pens and pen supplies, like ink and paper, from. Because they have stepped up and done the right thing by their employees. And I am speaking of the Goulet Pen Company. So and you can see this is an entry on their blog, on their website. So what they have done is they have decided that everyone is going to be working remotely. What that means, however, is that after Monday, they're not going to be shipping any more orders. They're doing this because they want their shipping and receiving people in their warehouse to be able to 
stay at home. So the interesting part of this is they are monitoring the situation and they fully acknowledge that this shutdown of theirs might be a few weeks, it may be longer. They will continue monitoring guidance from authorities to make a responsible decision. They warn that there's you're not gonna be able to regularly regularly restock, there'll be stock outages. However, this is the sentence that matters to me. We care immensely about the safety of our team and they will all be paid during this time. So I want you to let that sink in, this little boutique pen company that admittedly doesn't have a huge business, but they, they, have, they have a fair number of employees. This niche product, I, they're doing the right thing. All of their employees are going to be paid for the duration of however long this lasts. They didn't lay anybody off to do this. They could have, but they're choosing not to. When so many huge corporations have taken the easy route, and just laid off their employees rather than just continue to pay them throughout this crisis. Um, we're talking multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar corporations like McDonald's, Amazon. I mean, they have so much money and they, they could make this they could make things so much easier for their employees. But they've chosen not to, even though they have what many of us would consider to be nearly bottomless resources at their disposal. This little boutique pen company, in my estimation, has shamed all of them by doing the right thing for their, their employees. I was reading a story the other day that uh, there were documents that have leaked that have shown that McDonald's actually was fighting against uh, the bills that they're trying to pass in Congress to, to give employees sick time, paid sick time during this epidemic. And you hear things like that, and you can really start to, to doubt man's humanity to man, but then you see little companies like this who definitely do not have the bottomless resources of the McDonald's and the Amazons of the world. And for me, it restores my faith in humanity and uh, it reaffirms what I really truly believe in my heart is that people want to do the right thing. And some of them will even step up and do it from time to time. So kudos to the, the Goulet Pen Company. Uh, I wouldn't go there and order anything right now because they're not going to be shipping anything for a few weeks, but GouletPens.com. If you're into fountain pens, uh, if you know someone who's into fountain pens, calligraphy, that kind of thing, I would recommend Goulet pens to them. Uh, again, not to order anything now, but in a few weeks, when this all becomes something we can look back on, I, I mean, I've I've given them my patronage already, and I will continue to do so. Uh, so, I would highly recommend shopping there. That's it. Um, a half hour has gone by very quickly again today, but. Sorry I wasn't here yesterday, but thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. If you, uh, if you like these kinds of stories, uh, if you're 
you think that uh, you got some value out of this, do me a favor, please share the link to the show that's going to stay up as a video after the live broadcast is done. Just share it with your friends and tell them about this weird guy in Reno, Nevada, who, who's just trying to, to point out the good things that are happening in the midst of all the negative news that we're being hit over the head with on our normal local and national news stations. Again, thanks for stopping by. I will go ahead and leave you for now. But until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care, and remember, when you can choose to be anything, choose to be kind, because kindness matters. All right, take care, everybody.